this circuit here is an ideal diode. It's a module, I got it off eBay so it needs testing. And the purpose of an ideal diode module is to use active electronics to emulate the behaviour of an ideal diode. That is one that has zero forward drop. They're used in um, solar power and to a lesser extent of renewables, mostly solar. Because you need a blocking diode and even with a Scott key when you're trying to shove 10 amps through it you're going to get a fair bit of drop. A 12 volt system, 1 volt drop, that's one twelfth of your energy is just being wasted. So the very cheap off of eBay module here, might a bit better, is um, just a way to improve efficiency a little for very low cost. I've got it hooked up to my Bentley power supply in the shadows over there on the input and uh, this uh, dummy load on the output and my voltmeter placed across it. That's because I need to test this thing that came off eBay. So I need to test forward drop. Is it really near zero as it should be? Reverse or any current pass when it's backwards. And can it handle the load? Well, I can't test that. I haven't got a power supply that will handle 10 amps. But this one will do three and that's good enough for now. So let's test it. Power supply is at zero volts. Point oh five volts. This will be a little bit unstable at very low voltages because the active electronics haven't kicked in. But once this goes up high, there we go, the actives kick in. And forward drop, we've got 2.5 volts on the input, forward drop is 0.9. Dropping that to zero. That's not bad. I'm currently putting uh, 400 milliamps through it, zero forward drop. Now let's test if this thing can take the full load for the full input voltage of a solar panel, which is, um, I call it 20 volts, maybe higher. There we go, 15 volts, two amps going through. VFD is now 0.03. I hope this is actually going to the load, not being somehow wasted inside that thing. 22 volts, 2.9 amps, forward drop 0.05. That is uh, pretty good, I would say. Right, let's check that. 23 volts, 2.93 amps, 4.05. That is very good indeed. And ah! Um, uh, cut, cut the... <sighs> right, safe to say all that power is... Oh, I can smell burning. Ending up at the output stage. Um, okay, first test run complete. Actually, oh, so we do the load test. Is this thing even warm? Nope, not even warm, so... Efficiency. Yeah, I like so far. But... Can this thing handle reverse voltage? Okay, I have turned it around. I still smell burning wood. And, uh, and that should be reading something. Why is that not reading anything? I've got a wiring error somewhere. What's going on? I hadn't reconnected the cable that I hastily pulled out when it started to smolder. So, let's try it. Input voltage. 5 volts. 16. 25. 30. Um, 29.3, 29.3. So, yep, all of the voltage is being blocked. Current flow is zero, which means as a blocking diode, it blocks. Test two, passed. Well, I wouldn't entirely trust it because uh, I do have some issues. There's a critical component you can't see on this not very nice camera, 
which uh, has the part number filed off. I think some of those resistors and capacitors are actually dummies and it's a three layer PCB with some of the tracks run for no good reason on the inside. So whoever designed this thing does not want it reverse engineered. But as testing a black box, that it works. It takes three amps. It says it will take more. I don't entirely trust that. But it does have a nice big heat sink on the back. It's got a VFD of pretty much nothing. Uh, it's leak current or quintessence current is zero. I couldn't even read it when I had the element disconnected. I think this will do the job. Uh, oh, any testing will say, but I am quite optimistic.